this is Shyam. We were uh, going through the aptitude concepts. Uh, so we have seen the percentages. So let's continue the percentages topic and uh, we'll see some more questions on the same thing. Okay. So we have seen 10 questions. This is the 11th question. The question says, a coconut tree was planted two years ago. It increases at the rate of 20 percentage every year. If at present the height of the tree is 540 centimeters, what was its height when the tree was planted? See the line here. See, he said there was a coconut tree and it was planted two years ago. Now, it increases. Increases means it increases its height by the rate of 20 percentage every year. Okay, present height is 540 centimeters. What was its height when the tree was planted? See, there are many ways to solve this question. The easiest way is any kind of these type of questions. For example, these type of questions will be given like the population of a city two years back was 1 lakh. In the first year, it is decreased by 5 percentage. In the second year, it is increased by 5 percentage. What is the present population of the city? So like this, the questions will be asked. So you, we can simply write here as he is asking about the height of the tree. Let the initial height, I mean the original height of the tree two years back, I am considering it as some p centimeters consider so the initial height of the tree was p centimeters two years back okay now what what is the method we can use to solve this question see here so the present height present height is equals to initial height i mean the original height we need to take or initial height into 100 plus or minus x by 100 into so into 100 plus or minus y by 100 and so on how many times he gives you can take it so why we have taken this plus and minus both symbols if in the question he says the height is decreased take the minus symbol if in the question he says the height is increased take the plus symbol so here the present height of the tree that's what he has given which is 540 okay initial height we have taken it as p and originally it is increased by 20 percentage every year so for the first year 100 plus 20 by 100 into again 100 plus 20 it is increased for two years 20 percentage 20 percentage so two times we need to take if you give one more year take one more one more time also so go for the next step here this is 540 is equals to p into 120 by 100 into 120 by 100 so this is what we can do it here so cancel the things two zeros top and two zeros bottom you can cancel so this is 4 3 is a 12 4 25 is a 100 right 4 3 is a 12 4 25 is a 100 now see still we can cancel anything here this is 3 1 is a 3 180 is a so 3 180 is a 540 So, 3 ones are 3 180 is a okay. So, this is 12 ones are 12 ones are 12 12 five are 60. Now, I'll, I'll write once again what is the things that is left. This is 15 left here is equals to p by 25. Now, go for cross multiplication p is equals to 25 into 15. So, 15 five is a 75, 15 to the 30 plus 7 that is 375 centimeters that means so what is the question the what was its height when the tree was planted so the height of the tree when it was planted was 375 meters okay so what we have done here uh, we'll go for explanation once again there was a tree which was planted two years ago so after planting it two years ago every year it is increased by 20 percentage its height so 
it, the present height of the tree is 540 centimeters what was its height when the tree was planted that means at the time of the tree plantation what was its height that's the question he asked so let the original height of the tree i'm taking it as p centimeters so present height is equals to initial height into 100 plus r minus x by 100 into 100 plus r minus y by 100 and so on see we can take the plus symbol if he says increases we can take the minus symbol if he says decreases so as he says both times it is increases so we will take the plus symbol so 540 is the present height initial height is p 100 plus 20 by 100 into 100 plus 20 by 100 then go for the simplification so the present height of the tree i mean the original height of the tree was 375 centimeters so this is what so it was 375 centimeters when it was planted by increasing 20 percentage every year it has come to now 540 centimeters at present this is it so this is very important model you will get most kind of questions as i just now said you will get the same kind of questions on the population also let's see the question another question the question says kiran saves 10 percentage of his total salary next year he increases his expenses by 30 percentage but his savings remain same so what is the percentage increase in salary next year so we don't know what is his salary in the first year but he saves 10 percentage of that salary in the first year but in the next year his expenses were increased by 30 percentage but savings were same if, if i if he saves 10 rupees in the first year in the second year also he is going to save 10 rupees but the expenses were increased by 30 percentage for example in the first year if his expenses were 50 rupees now it will become 80 rupees like that okay so see his savings were same but the expenses were increased means definitely his salary would have been increased so how much is the salary that is increased when compared to in the second year when compared to the first year see here uh, we know that the income are the salary so income or the salary is a combination of savings and expenses. So salary is the combination of savings and expenses. So we don't know what is his original salary. Let us consider let initial salary I am taking. So we know I, uh, in the previous sessions so we have uh, seen that any unknown complete value in percentages can be taken as 100. So let initial salary, so I, we do not know what is his salary, so let us consider, consider it as 100. Okay. Now see what we can, how we can write this, so I will write here income, I will use that formula to solve the equation, so income this is savings and uh, I'll write here expenses. Okay, this is income and uh, savings and expenses. We'll take that into consideration and uh, we'll solve the question. So this is income. Now let's see. So I'll write here first year and uh, let us write second year. So let us take the values here, I mean uh, see we have we have taken the initial salary as 100 rupees, so I will write here initial salary, first year salary 100 rupees. So in this 100 rupees are, you can consider it as 100 percentage, so in this 10 rupees went for savings, so remaining 90 rupees were expenses. So, 100 is the income if you consider in that 10 were savings and 90 were expenses. In the second year, savings were same as 9, 10 rupees. So, second year savings were same because in the first year the savings are 10 rupees, in the second year also the savings are 10. But the expenses were increased by 30 percentage. See, we have seen this. If A is increased by X percentage, then how can we write it? The final value is A plus x percentage of a we have written it if a is increased by x percentage we can write as a plus x percentage of a so this also on 90 it is increased by 30 percentage so it is 90 plus 30 percent of 90 this is how we will write on 90, on 90 it is increased by another 30 percentage so see here this two zeros will cancel so this is 90 
so it is 90 plus 3 into 9 is 27 which will become 170 so 90 plus 27 is 170 that means the expenses in the second month has become 170 but the savings same see we have seen we have seen the formula that the income is nothing but the combination of savings and expenses for the second year now we have savings and expenses i think we can find out the salary of the second month the income of the second month i think we can find it out so income is nothing but the savings plus expenses okay so 117 plus 10 which is 100 and So, 117 plus 10 is 127. So, this income of the first year is 100 and the income of second year is 127. So, directly you can say 100 and 127, 27 percentage is increased, the salary is increased by 27 percentage. If we want to calculate, so percentage change or percentage increase or anything. So, percentage increase in salary. So, the percentage increase in salary is second year salary is 127 so second year salary is 127 minus first year salary is 100 by first year salary always you need to you need to take the denominator value as the initial value so initial value initial salary is 100 into converting anything into percentage multiply it with 100 so anything if you want to convert multiply it with 100 so here i want to convert this into percentage so multiply with 100 so it is cancelled so 127 minus 100 that is 27 percentage so this is the salary that is increased so as his salary is increased by 27 percentage so his he increased his expenses by 30 percentage in the next year See here, we will see it again. So, the income is calculated as income or salary is nothing but a combination of savings and expenses. So, consider his initial salary as 100. 100. If you want, you can consider it as percentage or take it as 100 rupees. See, in the first year, 100 rupees. In that, 10 rupees went for savings and expenses. 100 minus 10. This is, we have written it as 100 minus 10. See, in 100, 10 rupees I saved. That means, remaining 90 rupees I went for, I, I used it for my expenses. So, in the second year, the savings are same as the first year, which is 10. So, expenses were increased by 30 percentage. That means, on this 90, on the original 90, we increase 30 percentage expenses. So, 90 plus 30 percentage percent of 90, cancel the things. It is 90 plus 3 nines are 27. So, 90 plus 27 is 117. So, the expenses in the first month is 90 and the expenses in the second month is 117. Now, for the second year, we have savings and we have expenses. So, as for this formula, so the income can be calculated by using the, by adding both savings and expenses. So, the income is savings is 10 and expenses are 117 which is 127 is the income. So, first year income is 100, second year income is 127. Directly you can say 127 minus 100 is 27 percentage is increased. If you want to calculate in percentage, this is I will take second year salary minus first year salary by first year salary into 100 which is 27 percentage as the positive value it is increased. Let us see one more question. The cost of petrol is increased by 33 1 by 3 percentage. By how much should the consumption be brought down to keep the expenditure same? So, consider uh, the cost of the petrol is increased by 33 1 by 3 percentage okay for example before increasing the price consider for 100 rupees a person used to get one liter of petrol consider consider so before originally there was one liter petrol cost was 100 rupees but what happened now this 100 rupees they increased another 30 rupees consider so now it is become 133 rupees okay now by how much consumption he brought down to keep the expenditure same Still, if he if the price has become 133 rupees now we can't that person cannot buy one liter it is not possible so we he need to decrease the consumption to maintain the same price 
So before he was buying 1 litre, now maybe he will buy 0 0.7 litres or 0 0.8 litres so that again it will be 100 rupees. Okay. So this is what we need to do. Let us see how we can solve this. So we need to decrease the consumption to maintain the same price. So how much the decrease in the consumption can be done? Okay. Let us see here, we will write a small note. When the value of something is increased, we will write a note here. When value of some product or some commodity is increases, when value increases by x percentage, okay, when, when value increases by x percentage, then the percentage decrease in the consumption so how much percentage decrease in the consumption can be done to maintain the same price that is 100 into x by 100 plus x percentage this is the case for example if the same thing happen when the value decreases by x percentage if the value decreases by x percentage if the value is decreases by x percentage then the percentage increase in the consumption in the consumption is 100 into x by 100 minus x percentage. So these are the things we need to keep in mind. But what happened in this case? So remember these notes, these are important. What happened in this case? Now we will see the question once again and we will solve it. The cost of the petrol is increased by 33, 1 by 3 percentage. By how much should the consumption be brought down? Brought down means how much the consumption should be decreased to keep the expenditure same. See here, so it is increased, so we go for the first formula. But before that, convert this mixed fraction into an improper fraction. So 33 1 by 3 percentage is nothing but 100 by 3 percentage. Okay. Now see, we will use this. So 100 into x by 100 plus x percentage. So, 100 into x by 100 plus x percentage. So, this much percentage of the consumption should be decreased to maintain the same price. So, this is 100 into 100 by 3 by 100 plus 100 by 3. That means in the place of x, write this value. Okay. So, this is 100 into 100 by 3. by see here for the denominator I will take the LCM. So, it is 100 by 1 plus 100 by 3 which is 300, 3 into 100 is 300 plus 1 into 100 is 100 by 3 into 1 is 3. So, this is what we will write. So, 3 and 3 will cancel. So, here 3 will cancel this is percentage. So, write the final step 100 into 100 by 100 plus uh, 300 that is 400 percentage. So, this is two zeros will cancel here. This is 4 ones are 4 25 are. So, this is 4 ones are 4 25 are. So, the consumption should be decreased by 25 percentage to maintain the same expenditure. So, that is the answer for this question is 25 percentage. See here, it is increased by 33 percentage. Original value is increased by 33 percentage. So, how much I can consume, uh, how much my consumption should be decreased to maintain the same price, original price. So, that is 100 x by 100 plus x. So, convert this mixed fraction into improper fraction first. So, 33 1 by 3 is 100 by 3. So, substitute it in the place of x. So, 
cancel the things here take lcm 3 into 100 plus 100 by 400 so 100 plus 100 into 100 by 400 this two zeros will cancel 4 ones or 425 so the consumption should be decreased by 25 percentage to maintain the same expenditure that is the question a man scores 42.5 percentage and failed by 5 marks consider there is an exam has conducted and that a person scored 42.5 percentage and he failed by 5 marks if he scores 52.5 percentage then he would have passed by 15 marks okay if he scores 52.5 marks then he will get another 15 marks more than what he required to pass in the exam so the question is then minimum marks to pass in the exam is so this is a question he is asking so first find out for how many marks the exam has been conducted let let the total marks for which the exam has been conducted i'll take it as consider So let's take the total marks for which the exam has been conducted as M. Now see in this for this he has given two scenarios. So to pass in the exam. So to pass in the exam he we have two scenarios. What happened a person got 42.5 percentage of these total marks. He got 42.5 percentage of these total marks and failed by 5 marks. What does this means? If he get that 5 marks, then he will definitely pass in the exam. If he had got that 5 marks also, he will pass in the exam. But he has failed by 5 marks. That means he got 5 marks less. I mean, he need another 5 marks more to pass in the exam. See here. So, 42.5 percentage is what he got and he failed by 5 marks. That means he would have passed in the exam if he get that extra 5 marks also. So, in this case he will pass in the exam. So, what is the other case? If he scores 52.5 percentage of the total marks, if he get 52.5 percentage of the total marks, he would have passed by 15 marks. That means if he get 52.5 marks, then he will get 15 marks more than what is the pass marks. That means you can subtract it. That means in the first case, he is getting 5 marks less to pass in the exam. In the second case, he is getting, he got 15 marks more than what is required to pass in the exam. See, in both cases, this is equal. In both cases, he will pass in the exam. In both cases, he will pass in the exam. So, what I can do is, I can make equation 1 is equals to equation 2. Because in both cases, he will pass in the exam. So, this is 42.5 percentage So, 42.5 percentage of the total marks plus 5 is equals to 52.5 percentage of the total marks minus 15. We are just making it to find out what is the minimum marks to pass in the exam. So, this is take this uh, variables values to one side and constants values to one side. So, it is 52.5 percentage of maximum marks minus 42.5 percentage of the marks. So, I have taken this 42.5 to that side, take this 15 to this side. So, it is 15 plus 5 which will become 20. So, 52.5 minus 42.5 which is 10 percentage of the marks is 20. Now, consider, so this is 10 percent of the maximum marks of these total marks is equals to 20. So, this is 10 ones are 10 twos are. So, the maximum marks for which the exam has conducted is 200. So, the maximum marks for which the exam has been conducted is 2 marks. Now, what he is asking? Then the minimum marks to pass in the exam is. See? So, to pass in the exam, this is the minimum marks. Here, if you want, you can write. So, minimum marks. So, to pass in the exam, the minimum marks required. Any one equation you will take. I will take the first equation. So, minimum marks to pass. So, 
so minimum marks to pass in the exam so any one equation i'll take i'll take the first equation which is 42.5 per so 42.5 percent of m is 200 that's what we got just now plus another 5 so it is 101s a 102s a will cancel so 42.5 2s a it is 85 plus another 5 that means he need 90 marks to pass that means the person required a minimum of 90 marks to pass in the exam so it's simple check consider that the total marks of the exam is 90 so in this um, a person scored 42.5 percentage and failed by 5 marks simply he is saying that if he had got that 5 marks also he would have definitely passed in the exam but he failed by that 5 marks and if he scores 52.5 percentage of the total marks he would pass by 15 marks that means if he get 52.5 percentage he will get 15 marks more than what is a minimum marks to pass in the exam okay in both cases he will pass so to pass in the exam we have written the equation first case 42.5 percentage of the total marks plus another 5 we need to add in the second case he got 15 marks more than what required to pass so subtract it so in both cases he will pass in the exam write equation 1 is equals to equation 2 simplify so 10 percentage of the marks is 200 so total marks m is equals to so it is 200 so the total marks for which the exam has been conducted is so here 52.5 percentage of the marks minus 42.5 percentage of the marks is 20 so 10 percentage 52.5 percentage of the marks minus 42.5 percentage of the marks is 20 so it is 10 percentage of the marks is 20 which is 10 percent into marks is equals to 20 10 ones of 10 twos of 20 so total marks is 200 so minimum marks to pass in the exam is take any one equation so i'll take the first one so 42.5 percentage of m means 200 plus 5 101 100 2 42.5 into 2 is 85 plus 5 is 90 marks so the minimum marks to pass in the exam is 90 that is this question says question number 15 if the price of a sugar falls down by 20 percentage by how much percentage must a person increases his its consumption so as not to decrease the expenditure on this item okay now i think we have seen the previous question before previous question we have seen what the price of something is increased then we try to decrease the consumption to maintain the same price but what happened here the price itself is decreased so how much consumption we can increase by the same price with the same price see so as not to decrease the expenditure on this item so we have seen it so it is when the price of the item decreases falls down means decreases so it is 100 into x by 100 minus x percentage this is the increase in the consumption so that the expenditure cannot be decreased So it is the it was falls down by 20 percentage. So if you, if you take x is equals to 20 percentage, so x is equals to 20 percentage. Now check as he said it is decreased. See whenever how you remember it when he says if it is falls down or decreases in the sentence use minus symbol. If it says increases or gains or uh, more than use the plus symbol as he says decreases so it is 100 into so this is 100 into 20 by 100 minus 20 percentage So it will become 100 into 20 by 80 percentage. So this is 20 ones are 24 are 4 ones are 
for 20 Pfizer. So, for the same price, there will be an increase of 25 percentage in the consumption, increase in consumption at the same price. This is what. So, previous before previous question we have seen there was a increase in the price, so we decreased the consumption. Here, there was a decrease in the price, so we increased the consumption. So, this is that. So, as I said, if you see this word, use the minus symbol. If you see the word increases are more, then use the plus symbol. Question number 16, a batsman scored 120 runs which included 3 boundaries and 4, 8 sixes. What percentage of his total score did he make by running between the wickets? See, he scored a total of 120 runs means and he has given, he scored 3 boundaries and 8 sixes in this. So, first let us find out the runs by boundaries and uh, by boundaries and sixes. So, runs by boundaries and sixes. So, he scored 3 boundaries that means 3 fours plus 8 sixes. So, he scored 3 boundaries and 8 sixes which is uh, 3 fours are 12, 8 six are 48. So, which is 60 runs. So, by using boundaries and sixes he scored 60 runs. So, he scored 60 runs by using boundaries and sixes. Now, total score is 120. So, runs by running between wickets. So, total score is 120 in that 60 runs were scored by boundaries and sixes. So, remaining 60 runs were scored by running between the wickets. Now, directly we can say what percentage of his total score did he make by running between the wickets. So, out of 120, 60 runs were scored by boundaries and sixes and uh, remaining 60 runs were scored by running bet between the wickets. So, it will be half half. So, 50 percentage will be your answer. So, if you see that, so required percentage. So, running between the wickets is 60 out of 120 runs. So, running between the wickets he did 60 runs. Out of 120 runs he scored total. So, that is 100. So, this is 60 ones are 60 twos are 2 ones are 2 fifties are. So, 60 ones are 60 twos are 2 ones are 2 fifties are. That means he scored 50 percentage of the total runs by running within the wickets. Okay. It is simple, no need to do all these things, but check out of 120 runs, he scored 60 runs by using boundaries and sixes. So, 120 if you make into two parts, 60 and 60. So, this first 6 is 50 percentage, second 50, 60 also 50 percentage. So, 50 percentage of the runs he scored by boundaries and sixes. Another 50 percentage of the runs he scored by running between the wickets. Let us see one more question. Two students appeared at an examination. One of them secured 9 marks more than the other and his marks was 56 percentage of the sum of their marks. The mark obtained, the marks obtained by them are. That means there are two people, two students who are appeared for the exam in that one student got 9 marks more than the other student. Consider the first student. So, let us see the solution. So, let the first student, first student got x marks I am writing. So, the, let the first student got x marks. Now, what he said in the question, one of them secured 9 marks more than the other. So, definitely if first one student got x marks, the second student will get 9 marks more that is x plus 9 marks. So, one student got x marks and the other student will get x plus 9 marks. Now, what this says, nine, one of them secured 9 marks more than the other and his marks was 56, point, 56 percentage of the sum of their marks. So, the person who received 9 marks more 
his marks is 56 point, 56 percentage of the sum of the marks of both those students so as per the question we can write this the second student's marks x plus 9 is equals to his marks are 56 percentage of the both of their marks so it is 56 percentage of first student marks x and second student marks x plus 9 this is what he said in the equation so the person who received 9 marks more his marks is 56 percentage of the sum of their marks so sum of their marks means first student's marks is x second student marks are x plus 9 now simplify this let's simplify x plus 9 is equals to 56 percent of x plus x so 56 percentage of x plus x 2x plus 9 okay. try to simplify it nothing is there means 1 is there i can write this is 4 14 is a 56 4 25 is a now go for cross multiplication this is 25 into x plus 9 is equals to 14 into 2x plus 9 which is 25 into x plus 9 is equals to 14 into 2x plus 9 now 25 into x so this is 25x plus 25 9 is a 225 this is 14 to the 28x so this is 14 nines are 126 now take the variable values to one side so which is 28x minus 25x and take the constants values to other side so which is 225 So take the constants to other side which is 225 minus 126 so it is minus 126 so this is 28x minus 25x is 3x is equals to 225 minus 126 so which is 99 so you will get here x is equals to 99 by 3 that is 333 is a 99 so the value of x is 33 here now the marks of the students so the first student received a marks of so first student marks x is equals to 33 and the second student marks are x plus 9 that is 33 plus 9 is 42 so the marks of both the students are one is 32 one is 33 and the other is 42 see what we done in the in the question he clearly said that one student got nine marks more than the other student so let's take one student got x marks and the other student will definitely get nine marks more means x plus 9 so because of this x plus 9 the second student got 56 percentage of the marks of sum of the total marks so second student got x plus 9 marks which is 56 percentage of x plus x plus 9 x is the marks of the first student and x plus 9 are the marks of the second student now simplify this x plus 9 is equals to 56 percentage of x plus x 2x plus 9 so 4 14s are 56, 4 25s are 100. You can go for class multiplication. 25 into x plus 9 is equals to 14 into 2x plus 9. So 25x plus 25 9s are 225. 14 2s are 28x plus 126. So take the variable values to one side and constant values to one side. So 28x minus 25x is equals to 225 minus 126. So that you will get x value as 33. Now first student value x is 33 and second student will get x plus 9 that is 33 plus 9 which is 42 marks so these are the marks of both the students see the question in a shipment of 720 machine parts 20 percentage were defective and in another shipment of 480 parts 10 percentage were defective for the two shipments combined what percentage of the machine parts were defective see simply we can take 
add the two parts what is the total number of ma uh, machines first add that parts total parts let's see that solution so total i'll find out first so the total parts are so the total parts first machine uh, first shipment has 720 machine parts and uh, second shipment has 480 machine parts okay so this is this is 1100 plus 100 that is 1200 the total machine parts are 1200 in that 20 percentage were defect from the first shipment okay so find out the def defective pieces are find out are you can find out the good pieces let's find out the defective pieces so first shipment So first shipment out of this 720, 20 percentage were defective. So 720 into 20 percentage cancel the things which is 144 were defective. So from the first shipment 144 machine parts are defective and from the second shipment From the sec second shipment, we have total 480. In this 480, 10 percentage were defective. So, cancel the things, it will be 48. So, 48 are defective. Okay. Now, check this. What is the total defective? So, total defective is this is 12, this is 9, and this is 1. So, these are the total defective. I mean, combinedly from both the shipments, 192 are 192 machine parts are total defective. Therefore, what he is asking, what percentage of the machine parts were defective together? So, total combined defective percentage. Okay, combined defective percentage is so the defective parts. Take the defective parts. So combined defective percentage is take the defective part that is 192 out of we have 1200. Convert this into percentage multiply with 100. So 192 are the defective pieces out of total 1200. So multiply it with 100 to convert into percentage. So zeros will cancel. This is 12 ones of 12 ones of 7 will remain 12 6 is 72. So the total defective parts are 16 percentage together so he has given two shipments one shipment is having so he has given two shipments one shipment is having 720 machine parts out of which 20 percentage were defective and another shipment is having 480 machine parts out of which 10 percentage were defective so first calculate what is the total machine parts together in both the shipments so 720 plus 480 that is 1200 so first find out the defective pieces of first shipment so out of 720 20 percentage were defective so 720 into 20 percentage so 720 uh, 72 into 2 it is 144 parts were defective from the first shipment and from the second shipment out of 480 parts 10 percentage were defective so 480 into 10 percentage that is 48 parts were defective so total together from the first and second shipment it is 192 parts were defective machine parts okay combined what is a defective percentage so it is 192 out of 1200 were defective so together 192 machine parts out of 1200 machine parts were defective so 192 by 1200 into 100 so simplify the things so the total defective percentage from both the mesh from both the shipments is equals to 16 percentage Check the question. Ravi's salary was 50 percentage more than that of Amit. By what percentage? By what percentage was Amit's salary is less than that of Ravi? Very simple. We have seen this kind of question already, right? So here, so in this question, Ravi's salary is being compared with Amit's salary. So let's any unknown value you can take. Let Amit's salary. 
So any unknown value, we can take it as 100 percentage. Let Amit salary consider it as 100. Now what he says, Ravi salary is 50 percentage more than that of Amit. So Ravi salary So Ravi salary is on Amit salary, Ravi salary is 50 percentage more that is 100 plus 50 percentage of 100. Okay. Directly you can write it is 150, see 100 plus 50, so it is 100 plus 50 percent of 100, so 100 will cancel, so it is 150. So, Amit salary is 100 and Ravi salary is 150. Now, what he said, by what percentage was Amit salary is less than that of Ravi? So, required percentage, we are comparing the salaries of Ravi and Amit. But in reverse in the question, he is being, he is comparing the Amit salary with Ravi salary. So, required percentage is, take the difference between them, 150 minus 100 by, now check it clearly. By what percentage was Amit salary less than that of Ravi salary? So, their salary difference is being compared with Ravi salary. So, write Ravi salary in the denominator that is 150. Always remember with which we are comparing that value should be written in the denominator. Now, here Amit salary, I mean the difference between Amit and Ravi salary is being compared with Ravi salary into 100 percentage. So, because of he is comparing the difference with Ravi salary, write Ravi salary in the denominator. So it is 150 minus 100 is 50 by 150 into 100. So this is 50 ones are 50, 3 is a 150. So 3 ones are, you can write it. So 3 ones are 333 point 3 is a 333 point 3 3. So the required percentage is 33 point 3. 3 percentage. So, as per the question, so by what by what percentage Amit salary is less than that of Ravi? So, Amit salary is 33.3 percentage less than that of Ravi. Very simple. Here, the salary of Ravi is being compared with Amit salary. So, consider Amit salary as 100 because we do not know his salary. So, any unknown value you can consider it as 100. So, take Ravi Amit salary as 100. So, then Ravi salary will become on this Amit salary, it will be 50 percentage more. So, directly you can say, if Amit salary is 100, Ravi salary will become 150 percentage. So, find the difference between them, 150 minus 100 that is 50 and this difference is being compared with Ravi salary. So, 50 by Ravi salary is 150 into 100 percentage, which is 33.33 percentage. .33 so, we can conclude, Amit salary is 33.33 percentage .33 less than that of Ravi salary. Question. A person spends 20 percentage of his income on rent, 30 percentage of uh, remaining on food. So, after spending 20 percentage of the income on rent, what is left in that he spent 30 percentage of that remaining on food and shopping. And after that, he, what is the amount that is remains that he saved in the bank? If he saves 1400, so he has given a hint that the savings amount, what the amount he saved after all these expenses is 1400. Then what is his total income? That's what we need to calculate. See, let's take, consider his total amount, total salary as 100 percentage. Consider its total salary, let total salary. Hundred. Okay. In this, first, he spent on rent, he spent spent 20 percentage in 100 he spent 20 percentage so the remaining on if in 100 if he spent 20 percentage on rent the remaining will be 100 minus 20 that is 80 so still we have 80 in this 80 he spent uh, 30 percentage of the remain in this remaining he spent 30 percentage on food and shopping so, in this, I'll write here food and shopping, food and shopping. So, how much is remained? 80 is remaining 
in this 80 he spent 30 percentage on food and shopping so that is 30 percent of 80 so which is 24 so out of 80 he spent 24 on food and shopping and remaining that means he saves so remaining thing is savings so from 80 24 were the expenses so remaining thing were 56 percentage so consider them as percentage if you want okay so this is the 56 percentage were the savings now 56 percentage of the salary has been saved which is equals to 1400 rupees so 56 percentage of the salary that is saved so that will be equals to 1400 so 56 percentage of the salary is equals to 1400 then we need to find the total salary so 56 percent of the total salary is equals to 1400 nothing is there means one is there so here 14 fours are 56 14 hundreds are this is 4 ones are 4 25 are so the salary of the person the salary is 25 into 100 that is equals to 2500 rupees so this is what the question says the question is clearly saying a person spends 20 percentage of his salary on rent so consider his salary is 100 percentage in this he spends 20 percentage on rent so remaining salary will be 80 percentage so from this 80 percentage he spent 30 percentage on food and shopping so from 80 30 percentage is 24 he spent for food and shopping and the remaining 80 minus 24 that is 56 percentage he saved but what he has given in the question if he saves 1400 rupees that means savings is 56 percentage of the salary which is equals to 1400 so 56 percentage of the salary is 1400 means what is the total salary so 56 by 100 of salary is equals to 1400 go for cancellation 14 fours are 14 hundreds are 4 ones are 425 so the salary is 25 into 100 that is 2500 rupees